The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. At the dawn of the computer era, ENIAC and UNIVAC dinosaurs of digital processing were created by Remington Rand. Like their flesh and blood counterparts, these electronic machines had huge bodies and teeny tiny brains. When these computers had bugs, they were literally bugs drawn to the heat and light of their vacuum tubes. Like the dinosaurs and computers, Remington Rand evolved, first becoming Sperry Remington Rand, then ultimately Unisys. But during this Jurassic era, make that the late 1960s, Remington Rand turned its attention to making tyrannosaurs. I mean, typewriters. The Thunder Lizards of Creativity. Howdy folks, and welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters, where today we are looking at a piece of Futures Past technology, the Remington 333. It's a Sperry Rand Remington branded typewriter that's made by Brother. And this is, if you're familiar, a JP-1 variant made by Brother, as I mentioned, in Nagoya, Japan. Uh, this is what you would consider the second, like a JP-1 uh, slash 2, perhaps, or Mark 1, Mod 1, because it has some extra features that you don't find on the standard Brothers. So let's go ahead and give an overview of what the typewriter has to offer and how it distinguishes itself from its other JP-1 brethren. So it's a, considered an ultralight portable typewriter, uh, has an all-metal construction, very nice black or maybe su supremely dark gray, if you want to look at it in that regard. Uh, highlighting the keyboard, we have a red tab button over here. We can see that we have a full keyboard with a dedicated one exclamation mark, as well as the always popular plus and equal sign. Um, we have uh, the tension selector switch over here on the left, which, as is true with almost all the brothers, really does seem to have an impact on your typing touch. That's a really stiff spring that does seem to make a difference. Your ribbon color selector switch is over here with a red, a white, and a black, and that's, I guess, a little bit noteworthy. Um, you know, for some reason, Smith Corona and others always use red, white, and blue, although I don't think they ever used a blue color. And we can get this so you can see it. But it's a red, white, and black, I guess, truth in advertising here with the Remington 333. So if you're wondering, uh, why did they come up with the name 333? Well, I have been unable to find anything else. And if you think that's kind of an unfortunate name, well, wait till you find the Remington 666, which uh, rivals the Chevy Nova being sold in Mexico, in my mind, in, in terms of a, a product designation for the North American market that's sort of doomed to uh, be unpopular, at least uh, get uh, unintended consequences. But that aside, Sperry Rand uh, definitely is a company. It makes me think of, for some reason, the ancient Univac and ENIAC computers. So uh, high technology, a lot of military contracts. And I guess at this time they were breaking into the typewriter market by rebranding the Brother JP-1 typewriter, which we see here in front of us. So uh, just to, for uh, sake of detail, uh, on your left here you have this dual arrow. Uh, that is your margin release. The single arrow on the right-hand side, that is your backspace key. As always, you have a uh, repositionable carriage return lever, which helps you stow the machine away for storage when you're ready to go. Uh, left platen knob here has your line uh, spacing selector, so you have freewheeling for forms or adjustments. Single, one and a half and two. I always prefer the one and a half for myself. You have a paper bale, which has helpfully has two uh, little tines here that help you lift it up, so the left or the right. And then you have a paper tray, uh, for, or sorry, an eraser tray, which you would, of course, use if you made a mistake. You could roll your paper up, and then you would erase on top of this hard surface. And that's where we end up with uh, liquefied goo of eraser shavings inside the innards of all these machines. The tabs are set with these sliding tabs, and you have a, a ruler here to tell you where you're at. And never to be forgotten, Kevin, you want to show us where the paper support Da, 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 da. It right. is, this isn't really going to work that well. But Bing, da, da, that's right. Da 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 da. It's always nice when those pop out, and I almost always have to fix those when I get them because they're almost always bent. So if yours works right out of the gate, you're a lucky person. Uh, if we zoom in closely on the serial number here, 
we can perhaps hopefully see, we'll get a little bit zoomed in even further. I'm not sure if you guys can make that out, but that's an H and then a nine is the first uh, uh, prefix. And the way that, uh, indic way that works is if it's an alphanumeric for the month, and I think they skip the letter I, and then uh, the nine is the last digit of the decade or the year. It could be any number, but in this case, the nine indicates 1969 because they weren't making this particular model like this in 1979 or 59. So pretty much uh, guarantees it's a 1969. I believe that's a July of 60. All right, we've loaded up some paper in our Remington 333. So let's go ahead and give you a virtual typing test. First thing we want to do, of course, is release the carriage lock over here on the right hand side. So now our carriage will move freely and we'll uh, go ahead and zoom in and see what you guys think about the typeface and give you my assessment of the typing action. Okay, so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now, one thing that's interesting to me about this typeface is I don't think it's exactly a 10 or a 12. So 10, of course, is pica, but I think that it's actually an 11 character per inch type uh, face. So it's kind of a little bit in between. But in any case, it's a very nice, clear, clean imprint, which uh, I like quite a bit. And it just, uh, it just suits this machine in this era very well. Um, it's kind of a hybrid between a 10 and a 12. So very nice typeface. As I mentioned, the um, touch selector switch on this Remington 333 actually has an impact. So we have it on pretty high touch select. And for my two-fingered uh, key mashing technique, that works out really well. I've never had any issues on any brother with skipping or shadowing. Uh, they just seem to work so well. That's what I really like about the brothers. It's just utterly dependable, reliable. The platens are almost always in a nice uh, soft shape, certainly compared to their peers. I don't know what they used in the rubber composition to make that happen, but I wish uh, every manufacturer had gotten the rubber from the same place. Let's go ahead and crack the hood off, take a look. Um, this machine came to us in very good shape. We were fortunate that it still had its rubber grommets intact. Uh, we did take the effort of replacing the rubber grommets under the hood here, as you can see with this clear vinyl tubing, uh, and that cushions the uh, lid so you don't get any rattles. That's one of the knocks on brothers in general is that people tend to say, well, you know, they have kind of a tenny sound. And I suspect a lot of that comes from the sound deadening material which are, were built in these machines uh, has degraded and is rock hard and therefore isn't doing its job. But I've actually also, uh, on some other brothers that I owned, added some more sound dampening material, even went to the trouble of adding some dum-dum uh, putty here to help deaden the sound of the returning keys. And some have also removed this uh, uh, rebound mechanism to help that, which helps the keys uh, fly back faster because they find there's a little harmonic buzz. None of which I have really noticed. Um, maybe my hearing just isn't quite so good anymore. But uh, I don't find any of those problems to be any kind of showstopper or uh, or deterrent to owning a brother. We have, uh, by the way, a, a black and green ribbon installed in this machine. I, I always kind of try to like to match the ribbon colors with the machine colors or at least something that seems suitable and I think that the green and the dark gray on this one really go together well. Here's a quick look at the case for the Remington 333. As you can see it's kind of a standard um, leatherette type case, vinyl I guess. Very useful, very helpful and this will lead us into a comparison with another JP1 variant we have over here. This is a Brother Charger 11 which we haven't had an opportunity to clean up yet. This is a later version of the charger. You can see it's almost identical, but there is a difference. This variant here has a flatter uh, ribbon cover lid, um, much like the Kmart 100 Deluxe, etc. So uh, it does not have a tab, it does not have a full keyboard, but it does have, quote, correction. In this case, uh, this has simply the, the ability to have stencil, silver, and black. So white, silver, and black. I guess, uh, I don't know if white was a stencil or not, but uh, you can type on the upper and lower half of the ribbon, which was this horrible um, liquid paper style correction type, and you can see some vestigial type corrections have been made on this ribbon. Uh, nowadays, these things just leave all kinds of dust and crud in the machine, so as soon as you see one of these ribbons, throw them away and just turn them back into 
a standard red, white, and black selector. They work perfectly fine. But I just wanted to give you a comparison between an early, it's actually a late, a late model production, but early model JP1 variant with the Remington 333, which has the higher a ribbon cover, which I think looks maybe a little bit better, at least in this uh, layout. And this one, of course, had the correction option. So although it doesn't have the ability to correct physically, it just types over using the correction tape. Let's take a quick look and see if we can figure out what year this one was made. I can't quite see the letters without the reading glasses. Let's see. There is an H and a 2, so that's going to be August. Funny, this one was made also in H, which is also August of 1972. So this is three years newer, but has less features in some ways than the Remington 333. Just goes to show you, Brother was saturating the market in this time period, really dominating it with a wide variety of machines, branded by all different manufacturers. All right, let's give a quick summary overview of the Remington 333, which is a JP1 variant, second half. Kevin, what do you think some of the pros are? Um, it's ultra portable. It has an all metal construction. It has a full keyboard with dedicated number one slash exclamation mark and a plus and equals. And also it has a cat, cat key. That's right. One thing we didn't mention is the tab, while it has tabs, they are preset every 10 units. So they're not, uh, you can't set them anywhere. You just, you could still use them though. I guess that might even be somewhat of a con. So half pro, half con, which leads us into cons. What are the cons, Kevin? Um, it, it, the carriage shift is heavier than the segment model. That's and, right. It gives you a pinky workout sometimes. And uh, it is a tinny sound slash resonance. Yeah, and then that's maybe if you have really good hearing or maybe spider senses, you could detect a little bit of a vibration coming out of this machine uh, uh, in some parts. But uh, all in all, we think we really love my brothers. We don't think we love them. We know we love brothers. And with this paint scheme and uh, with the full keyboard that you have available to you on the Remington 333, uh, we think that this really is one of the best variants of the JP1 models. And if you have a chance to find one of these uh, Remington 333s, we hope you seize the opportunity to, to snatch it up. Thanks a lot. We talked about how Sperry Rand was a high technology company, split off of Sperry and then also the Remington Rand Corporation. Um, reminds me of the Japanese companies now and their fascination with robot dogs. We Another Japanese high-technology product, the robot dog next to the Remington Rand Sperry 333. Please like, subscribe, and share.